And so AI agents will be everywhere. How they run, what, the, what enterprises run, and how we run it will be fundamentally different. NVIDIA, DeepMind, and Disney just made a robot move like a real human, with feeling in its fingers, and no one's ready for what comes next. And so we need a new line of computers. And this is what started it all. These tech giants didn't just make a new computer. They built a living world powered by a machine brain that learns faster than anything we've ever seen. Let us show you what happens when Newton wakes up and starts learning faster than we do. Inside the chip that sees the future. NVIDIA starts with their usual show. No cue cards, no script, just jumping into the madness. They kick things off with a big chunk of metal they call the GeForce 5090. It's been 25 years since they started messing with graphics cards. And this one? Smaller by about one third compared to the last model. It cools better too. Not just better, one third better at getting rid of heat. And it runs so fast you almost can't keep up. All thanks to the brainy machine stuff packed inside. But what they show next bends the laws of real-time physics. And it doesn't even need a graphics processor. Now here's where it gets crazy. When this thing puts a picture on the screen, it only really calculates one part out of 16. The rest? The machine brain fills in the gaps. One dot or pixel gets made the usual way. Then 15 others get predicted. It doesn't just guess either. It nails it so well you can't spot the difference. And every picture on your screen stays smooth and clear from one to the next, no matter how fast it moves. They're not just doing this for games either. They're making deals with big car makers now. One of the biggest ones picked NVIDIA to power all of its self-driving cars. That means NVIDIA is building the tech that tells the car how to drive, how to design itself, and how to get built in the factory. It's like putting a brain inside every part of the process. They even have a whole setup just for making sure these machines don't mess up. Safety is the name of the game. That safety bit, it's not just some slogan. They had their people check every single piece of code, all 7 million lines of it, not just once. They had third-party groups go through it too. These folks combed through the chip, the systems, the programs, even the thinking behind how the car drives just to make sure nothing goes sideways. And it's all about being clear, fair, and being able to explain exactly why the machine does what it does. You think that's wild? Wait till you see what's next. A new mind for the motion picture. Then comes Blackwell. Not a name that screams computer, but trust this. It's a monster of a machine. This setup is heavy. 70 pounds kind of heavy. Inside, there are eight powerful processing units, and they went ahead and jammed two of their latest chips into one block. So eight of those big blocks sit under one box. Think of it like stacking brains on top of brains. They hook all this stuff together with something they call MV-Link. It's not a normal connector. It's like giving all the brains in the setup the power to talk to each other at the exact same time, with no waiting. Everyone sends and gets info instantly, and they broke the whole thing up into different parts, moving the connectors to the center of the setup. Now there are 18 smart switches sitting in nine trays across nine racks. They took a hard look at cooling too. Fans weren't cutting it anymore. These things get hot, real hot. Now they run cold water through the whole system. Every chip, every part gets cooled down with liquid. And with that, they were able to squish all that brain power into a single rack. Not a whole room, just one rack doing more than any old server room ever could. Here's where the numbers get nuts. Their old setup used about 60,000 parts. This new one, 600,000. That's 10 times more gear crammed into the same size space, and it pulls 120,000 watts of power. That's not your average wall plug. It needs real muscle just to stay on. But all that energy turns into a machine that can do one exaflop of math every second. That's a billion times a billion calculations every single second. And then there's Disney. They're not just making cartoons anymore. They want this tech to make characters that move like real people, right as you watch. Not animated after the fact, it's all happening live. The characters react like they're alive, like they're watching you too. Deep Mind jumped in with something else. They're building learning machines that don't need teachers. No one tells them the rules of how stuff falls or moves. They just watch and figure it out like a baby learning to walk by falling a bunch of times until they get it. That physics engine, it doesn't just copy what happens in the real world. It understands it. It knows how things break, bend, roll, 
bounce and crash. And every time it watches something happen, it gets better at guessing the next one. It never stops learning. Studios and labs used to need a whole team just to figure out how a box tips over on screen. Now this machine brain does it in real time, in seconds, and it doesn't need help. It keeps getting better the more it sees, faster, sharper. Like a kid who learns how to ride a bike and then builds their own. You take NVIDIA building the parts, DeepMind doing the thinking, and Disney adding the real world look and feel. And what you get isn't just a new game or movie effect. It's machines that understand motion, balance, shape, light, time, and space. They don't just follow code anymore. They make decisions, real ones. But there's one system that ties all of this together and makes it work like a real team. The factory that builds digital workers. Now let's talk about this thing they made called Dynamo. Forget everything you know about old school computer systems. This thing isn't here to run boring office stuff. Dynamo is built for a new kind of workplace. One where machines, not people, do most of the thinking. They didn't call it Dynamo just because it sounds cool. Back in the day, a Dynamo was what kicked off the whole power revolution. Water came in, got turned to steam, and bam, power out. Same idea here, but with data. It's like a brain that takes in info and shoots out smart decisions super fast. This isn't running on a basic server setup either. It's riding on top of a factory built just for machines that learn how to do things. The idea is that in the past, companies used programs like ones to run apps for offices and business stuff. But in the future, the app is actually a machine learning helper. Instead of workers doing the jobs, there are digital workers, little agents trained to understand and act. Dynamo is the system that makes all these agents work together. And it has to be strong enough to deal with a world full of digital workers, running nonstop, never needing breaks. Then they brought out a monster machine called the DJX Station. It looks like the kind of thing you'd expect aliens to use. 20 petaflops of power, 72 CPU cores, fast memory that you usually only hear about in big science labs, and slots just in case you want to throw in some extra graphics cards for fun. They're saying this is what computers should be now, not tiny little boxes under desks. This is the future, and they're not just keeping it for themselves. All the big computer brands, you know, the usuals like HP and Dell, are going to be making these too. From small work computers to giant data-eating monsters. This machine isn't just for looks. It's for people who do real work with data, like scientists and researchers. The ones who build the tools, who test the machines, who need things to run fast and never slow down. The DJX station will be made by all the usual computer makers. There's going to be a version for everyone, from someone working at a desk to someone running a full-on server room. Let's not skip the robots part. Robots, real ones, not the kind that live in cartoons. Turns out we're running low on people who want to do jobs. By the end of this decade, we might be short by 50 million workers. They even said they'd pay a robot $50,000 a year to show up. The point is, robots aren't coming. They're already here. And there's big money in it. They're working on machines that can do more than just look smart. Ones that can move around, touch stuff, react to the world. It's not about robots pretending to be people. It's about machines doing jobs that no one else wants or can do anymore. Then came Omniverse. Think of it like a sandbox for all this robot magic to happen. It's where they test the robots, train them, and get them ready for the real world. But it's not just a sandbox. It's got tools that help them dream up whole fake worlds, infinite ones. Ones where robots can mess up over and over without breaking stuff. That's where Cosmos comes in. It's like a machine that spits out new worlds all day long. Want a slippery floor? Done. A busy warehouse? Boom. A jungle gym full of boxes? No problem. Cosmos makes it, Omniverse runs it, and the robot gets smarter every time. And when it comes to teaching robots, it isn't like teaching a kid to read. You can't hand them a book. You have to show them how the world works. That means giving them rules based on physics. Gravity, heat, touch, balance. That stuff has to be right, or the robot learns the wrong thing. So they built a brand new physics engine. This one can handle soft things, hard things, small movements, big crashes. It runs on fast computer parts and plugs into the training world like a perfect fit. Robots can train in these digital worlds fast, real fast, 
almost faster than real time. Then came the announcement that shook the whole room. Three big names joined up, the chip makers, the movie scientists from Disney, and the deep learning team from the research labs. Together, they built Newton. Newton is the tool that makes all the movement stuff work. It makes sure a robot doesn't just fall over or slide across the floor. Newton gives the robots balance, grip, soft steps, and smooth moves. It's built to simulate everything, right down to the wiggle in a finger. They showed off a robot named Blue. Blue has two brains inside, not just simple chips. These are the top of the line ones used in their smartest systems. Blue moved in real time. It didn't wait, it didn't lag. It watched, reacted, touched things. It could feel pressure. It could adjust its hand movements depending on what it picked up. The robot was fully alive in that simulation. If a robot like Blue can think, feel pressure, and move like us, when do we call it alive? Like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe now.